safekeeping and the sparing of our lives. And now, God, we know that we need power for living, and we know that power for living comes from your word. And so we ask that you would speak to us through your word. It is in Jesus' name that we do make this request. And all of us say amen. I think all of us got something that we call this thing that is agitating, aggravating, or troubling us. This thing that causes us to stumble in our belief. If you would, notice with me uh, in the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy, the very first chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. And we shall read uh, verses 30 through 32, and I'll be reading tonight from the King James Version. Deuteronomy 1 and 30. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you. According to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how the Lord thy God bear thee as a man doth bear his son in all the way that he went until he came to this place. Notice carefully our focal verse. Notice carefully our verse where we uh, get our inspiration. Verse number 32 says, Yet in this, in this thing, yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God. Yet in this thing, this thing, you did not believe the Lord your God. What is your thing that is causing you to doubt the word of God? What is your thing 
that is causing you to miss your blessing. Moses told the Israelites, yet in this thing you did not believe the Lord your God. You, you, you've seen how God has delivered us from Egypt. You, you, you've seen how God fed us, how God kept us in the wilderness. You, you've seen the miraculous deliverance of God through the Red Sea. Yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God. My brothers and sisters, everyone faces challenges in some form or the other. In life, some people are completely overwhelmed by their challenges and others refuse to give up. But my question to you today is do you believe God? Do you believe God? Everyone faces challenges in life. Everybody faces one challenge or the other. But when we are challenged, let us remember that God has, what God has done for us before. When we are meet with a challenge that's overwhelming, let us remember what God has done for us before. God is worthy of our complete commitment, obedience, and trust. He's worthy of our trust. He's proven himself to be worthy of our obedience, our commitment, and our trust. In the book of Numbers, in the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 23 and verse number 19. The Bible gives us a description of the trustfulness of God. God is not a man. Numbers 23 and 19. That he should lie. Neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? My brothers and my sisters, let us keep in mind that God is not like people. People who lie. He is not a human who changes his mind. Whatever he promises, he does. He speaks and it is done. We don't have to call God out of heaven. We, we don't have to call God down here. He's already here. He's everywhere at one time. And God does not have to manifest himself to us. All God has to do is say, let there be. And there is. God speaks. And it is done. God, my brothers and sisters tonight, is truthful. He and his word can be trusted. You can trust him by his word. 
He stands by his word. The question for us tonight is this. How will we respond to what the word of God says about God? How, how do you respond to what the word says about God. All we can know about God is found in his word. We often say God is a mysterious God, but God reveals himself in his word. So how do we respond about what the word, the Bible, what it says about God? Do you believe that God will keep his word? Do you believe that God will keep his word? Do you believe that God is trustworthy? Can you believe tonight that God can be trusted? That he will make his word good? Listen, the word will work in your life only as you believe it. The word works in your life only as you believe it. If you have trouble believing God, then you have trouble with his word working in your life. If you have trouble believing uh, what God says about healing, then you're going to have a problem with healing. If you have trouble believing what God says about being a provider, then you're going to have trouble waiting on God to provide. The word will work in your life only as you believe it. Only as you believe it. My brothers and sisters tonight, you, you demonstrate that you believe someone when you show confidence in his word and credibility. Is God credible in your life tonight? However, if you do not believe him, you reveal that uh, you do not trust him by your indecisiveness, unable to make a decision about God's promise. Unable to make a decision about what God says. The same thing that you do toward fellow man. The same thing applies in your relationship with God. Notice with me Hebrews 10 and 23. Notice with me tonight. Hebrews 10 and 23. The King James Bible says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. The, the word, the word, the word, waving, wavering, hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering, without being indecisive, without being indecisive, without being persuaded, without having confidence. And the reason why we should hold fast to our faith without wavering is because he is faithful, the Bible says, that promise. 
He is faithful that promise. God is faithful that made the promise. And so let us hold firmly, not, not with a slack hand, but firmly, firmly. Let us hold tight, tight, tight. Let us hold tight to the hope we profess. And, and the word profess simply means what we claim to be, what we claim we believe, who we claim we are. Let us hold fast, hold firmly to the profession of our faith. Why, Brother Pastor? Because we can trust God to keep his promise. We can trust him to keep his promise. My brothers and sisters tonight, you demonstrate your belief or disbelief in God by not believing or believing what God promised will come to pass. If you have no confidence in the word of God, you have no confidence in God, in God. But I'm happy to know tonight that, 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 that our confidence, our confidence in God, or our confidence in God's word does not disturb God. It does not bother God. For 2 Timothy says, in Timothy, 2 and 13, 2 Timothy 2 and 13, the Bible says, if we believe not, if we believe not, yet, yet, he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Why are you losing to this thing that you're going through? Why are you allowing this thing to dominate your life? Why are you allowing this thing that you're going through to doubt God? Why are you allowing this thing to cause disbelief in your life? Whatever this thing is in your life. This thing in the Israelites' life where they were afraid to take the promised land. What are you afraid of? What are you fearing tonight? What is your, this thing? It does not disturb God how you look at your, this thing. Because Timothy says, if we are not faithful, God remains faithful. What we do doesn't determine how God does. You know, some of us like to treat people like they treat us. But God is not like that. What we do does not determine what God does. If we believe not yet, he remains faithful. Because he cannot be false to himself. He cannot deny his word. He cannot deny himself. God is the truth. And he's the truth from everlasting to everlasting. And he cannot deny himself. He cannot be false to himself. Your belief tonight about your this thing your belief tonight is evidence, it's the proof, it's the confirmation, it's the ver verification that you trust God. Your belief in whatever you're going through, tonight is the evidence, it's the proof, it's the confirmation, it's the verification that you trust God. Listen. God is not like man. 
God is not impressed by how well you sound when you sing, how well you sound when you pray, how well you sound when you preach. Neither is he impressed by how well or how many passages of scripture you can quote. God is not impressed with our performances. Listen, as we close, God takes action, God takes steps, God makes a move. God does something when you believe his word. He does something. He takes actions. He takes steps. He makes a move when you prove it by acting on his word. When you believe his word and when you prove it by acting on his word, God makes a move in your situation. My brothers and sisters, tonight, believe, belief is trust in action. Belief is trust in action. God will do what he says he will do. God will do what he says he will do. The word will work in your life only as you believe it. Whatever this thing is in your life, believe God. Believe his word. Trust him. God will do what he says he will do. You can be saved tonight. Romans 10 and 9. If you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead you shall be saved. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of your life, and if you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. My brothers and my sisters, make it your business tonight. Pray for the sick. Pray for those that are less fortunate than we are and to pray for those that are bereaving. Thank you once again for allowing us to come into your house. We've enjoyed being with you tonight, but it is that time. So my brothers and my sisters, be smart, be safe, Wash your hands, keep your distance, get your vaccinations. Don't put your trust in the vaccination. Put your trust in God. Take the vaccination and trust God. Well, my brothers and my sisters, until the next time, we're going to see you. Yes, I do believe. Yes, I do believe. You need to call somebody right now and tell them God's going to do it. else. I really remember.
remember this. Your storm is over. I believe your rain is gone away. Clouds have moved. I believe you make it through it. about your future.